Welcome back to the McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. We will continue today with the topic of numbers. And specifically, we're going to talk about machine integers. So a machine integer is an integer represented using a fixed number of bits. Um, now there's different ways this can be done. One obvious way would be we would use one bit to represent whether the number is positive or negative. This is what's called the signed magnitude approach. And the other bits are used to represent the magnitude, or you can think of it as the absolute value of the integer. But this has a problem because it leads to two different zeros, a negative zero and a positive zero. And as we all know, zero is neither negative nor positive. So most computers don't use this approach. They use what's called the two's complement approach. So two's complement uses a fixed number of bits, specifically two of the n bits, where n is something like 8, 16, 32, 64. And it has just one zero. It has 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 positives and 2 to the n minus 1 negatives. So it actually has one more negative number than a positive number. And the positive numbers work just as you would expect, but the negative numbers are a little different because the most significant digit, digit is 1. And this is a this a, uh, scheme for representing integers works nicely. Uh, to negate a number is done by inverting its bits and adding 1. We have the nice property that x plus the negation of x is always going to be 0. Uh, addition and multiplication are performed using modular arithmetic. We've talked about that before. This is essentially clock arithmetic. And it is possible to have overflow. If we take two numbers that are big, when we add them together, multiply them together, they could be so big we can't represent them. This is what's called overflow. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate two to complement using 8 bits. So in a modern computer today, we'd be using 32 bits or 64 bits. But how 8 bits works is exactly the way how 32 bits work. The difference is with 8 bits, we only have 2 to the 8 uh, possible integers with 32 bits, for example, we'd have 2 to the 32 possible integers. Okay, so this shows the numbers that we're representing. You can see down here. Um, you can see down here the smallest number is negative 128, and the biggest number is 127. And we have 128 negative numbers, 127 positive numbers, and we have 0. And you can see 0 is represented by what you would expect, all zeros. Uh, 1 is, has a 1, and then if we look at uh, the next number, it was going to be all zeros, but end in 1, 0. Everything is as we would expect until we get to this maximum the maximum positive integer. The first bit remains 0. Now notice if I add a 1 to this, so I have 1 plus 1, that will be 0, carry 1, 1 plus 1, 0, carry 1, and so forth, and that will give us 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So if I add 1 to this, look what I get. I get the biggest the biggest negative number in absolute value, or another way of saying the smallest negative number. So we have, we do have here um, a kind of clock arithmetic, or it is clock arithmetic. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to start adding, I go up like this, 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 and then I go down here and I go up and up and up and up. So when I have a negative number, I will add 1's the same way. And so this, when I add 1 to this, I'll get minus 127. Add another one, minus 
126. And notice minus 1 is represented by all 1s. And if I add a 0 to that, all of these bits flip, and now I get 0. So this is a nice way of representing uh, our machine integers. And it has this built into it. We're going to do arithmetic, which means counting, addition, and multiplication using modular arithmetic or clock arithmetic. So this means that if I would add, let's say, let's say I would add a, um, let's say we just add 127 plus 2. So 127 plus 2 would be, I start 127, I go 1, 2, it would be this number, minus 127. But 127 plus 2, if we think of that as normal addition, is 129. We can't represent 129. It's not, it's not here. There's no way of representing 129. But if we add 127 plus 2, we're going to actually get, we're actually going to get minus 127 because we're not doing normal arithmetic. We're doing modular arithmetic. Um, so, um, so if we want it to be normal arithmetic, there's, there's two approaches. One approach would be that we just do the arithmetic modular. We give back the number 127. It's up to the user to realize that we really had overflow. The other approach is that we monitor what's going on. And when we get a number like this, we actually tell the user there's overflow. We don't give them the correct, we don't give them the answer. We just say there's overflow. Um, so, so how we do arithmetic with um, machine integers is a little bit subtle. We can use modular arithmetic. We can do our arithmetic very fast, but if we do something like add 127 plus 2, we're not going to get 129. We may not even get, depending on the implementation, anything that says we have overflow, we're going to get minus 127. Okay, so I have a question to end with about machine integers. This is one of those questions to see if you've been paying attention. What are the smallest and largest integers in a type of 2 to the n bit machine integers? So you have several choices here. I'll give you a moment to think about it. Okay, now that you're back, uh, let's say we have our integers here, and we have 2 to the n represented. So we know one of them is going to be 0, and then we're going to have half of them. That's half are going to be the negatives, and then the other half are going to be, notice this is the other half including zero. So one half is negative, one half is zero and negative. That means the positive part is to the n minus one, then we take one from that. And so you can see this is the correct answer. Okay, this was a, going to be a short lecture Today we're going to stop, and our next lecture is going to be on floating point numbers. So thank you very much. See you later.